up. Bam. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. I am really excited to uh, bring to you Walt Key, who has just such an amazing background and experience in the real estate industry, along with a, a long military career. Um, he approached me, I don't know, the beginning of December, the end of November sometime, and uh, wanted to uh, do this class for you guys to really help you learn how he has built his business using strategic partnerships. So I, I knew that that was a great topic and, um, and I, I'm so excited to have him share with all of you guys. Um, he is here sharing for free. You notice we didn't charge you to come into this. So, um, and his time is very valuable. So we're so thankful to have him here. A couple of housekeeping things, if you will, before I turn it over to Walt. Um, please, if you can, turn your cameras on. We want to see your faces. It will really help Walt know if what he is um, teaching or sharing with you is coming across. It, you know, if you don't understand and you have a, a quizzed look on your face, that's helpful. Um, just actually a lot of times seeing people nod, knowing that you're, you, you get it or you understand what he's talking about is also very helpful for someone doing this. Um, so if you can turn your camera on, please do so. Um, all right, Walt, thank you so much for your time in the group today. Uh, um, the floor is all yours. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for being on. It looks like we got about 35 or so people on the call, so it should be a great learning environment. So this is not going to be super long. It's not a big philosophical diatribe. I'm going to show you legitimately the nuts and bolts of how I do this. It's really it's it's fun when you realize that uh, you can go do great business without ever paying money for it. And you actually serve people at a, at a higher level when you do it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about building strategic partnerships. Before I do that, uh, I have a question for the for the crowd. So I'm just I would love to know. Drop it in the chat. When I say who's your favorite CEO, who's the first person that comes to mind? In any company that you know of, who's your favorite CEO? Just drop that name in the chat really fast. Don't be shy. I got one person in the chat so far. There we go. Warren Buffett. Good one. I like it. Sarah Blakely, Warren Buffett again. Everybody loves Warren Buffett. It's hard not to. Jeff Bezos, okay. Brandy says, I have no idea. I'm not following CEOs. Okay, got it. Got it. All right. So I, I'm going to keep going. Elon Musk, I figured that one would pop up. The reason I asked that question is because I expected most of you to not say yourself. But you should be your favorite CEO. Because every single person on this call right now that has a real estate license is the CEO of their company. And the faster you realize that and you start thinking like a CEO, you start interacting with people like you're the CEO, you start running your business as if you were in charge of it and you're the CEO. So I get to make the decisions, but I also have to put in the work. It'll change the dynamic for how you build relationships and do your business. So that's the concept behind what I'm talking about today. So if you're the CEO of your company, you should also be thinking about who are my board of directors, right? Every great CEO has a board of directors, other smart, focused people that are aligned and are trying to grow together. That's all this strategic partnership conversation is, is finding those kinds of people to surround yourself with and then share business so that you all grow together. That's all we're really talking about. So I'll give you a tangible example really quick, and then I'm going to show you, I'm just going to start walking through the nuts and bolts of exactly how we do this. When the call is done and the recording is finished, I'll email everybody, because I know we had a lot of people register that aren't on the call, uh, the recording so you can watch it again, digest something else, right? learn a different point from it. And then I'll send a couple resources with you to help you execute the things that we talk about. So I'm going to focus a little bit on estate attorneys, but understand that the conversation that we have today works equally well for absolutely any small business professional, an estate attorney, a CPA, a financial advisor, a, a local great handyman in your market, right? You can build this out as far and wide as you want to. 
And that's all business that you can both put your client in front of to service them better and business that you can get to service somebody else's clients. I have on my whiteboard, you can't see my whiteboard right now, but on my whiteboard, just to the left of me, in my whole office is whiteboard. Uh, I have about a dozen listings that are going on the market either this month or early February. And two of those are directly from my estate attorney partner. I just closed the deal in December from my estate attorney partner. So the things that I'm telling you, 100% tangible. It's not philosophical. I get business all the time from my partners. No, no, no lead spend, no cost whatsoever, no marketing budget. There's no referral fee to pay. They're not licensed agents. It's just great professionals sharing business with each other in order to serve our clients better. So I'm going to dive in. I'm going to show you exactly how to put this together. Understand that the concept is as simple as it sounds. Go build partnerships and actually care enough to want to add value to their business first. Everything else will take care of itself. Let me grab my screen share here. I'm going straight to the Google machine. I'm going to show you exactly how you start finding these partners. Okay. Go to your Google machine when you have a moment. Don't do it right now on the Zoom. Pay attention for 30 minutes. Put in a state attorney near your city, CPA near your city, financial advisor near your city. Just go find them. Who are we looking for? We're looking for a particular type of partner, right? Someone who's not so big that they don't value relationships because that's not going to be a good partner for you. And we want someone that's been around long enough that they have some kind of reputation. So I know if I send my clients there, they're going to be properly serviced, right? So as a quick example, a state attorney, a state attorney near Keystone Heights, this is my market. You see Veronica Owens, Taylor and Taylor, Paul Newell, and then the reviews start going down from there. All you're going to do is a quick scan. Tom and Betty's is a great restaurant. That doesn't sound like my estate attorney partner. Maybe they changed their business address. Two months ago, lady answering the phone was rude, short, and difficult. Would hate to see how they waste them. Okay, I'm done with that. Taylor and Taylor is not my partner. I will not put my clients in front of that level of service, right? Moving on, Paul Newell. He hasn't had a review in a year, and I'll save you the time. His website no longer works. He's probably not in this business anymore. Veronica, Veronica Owens. Five stars, four stars, five stars. I'm going to save you the trouble of reading through all these. There's one from three years ago, but she had a different partner there. I've already had a great conversation with her. So I'm looking for someone that's got great reviews. They have an online presence. I can clearly see that they're actively in this business, right? If I go to their website, I have an active website, the bio of the agents. I have their practice areas. So I know what they do. Family law, estates and probate is really what I was looking for here, right? Real estate, general practice, right? The, clearly, these people know what they're doing and they're in business. But with a multi-huge conglomerate, Morgan, 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 Stanley, and Morgan, they're not gonna they're not gonna understand the value of a relationship. With a, a small town feel with two different attorneys, that's probably big enough to be successful, small enough they're still trying to grow. That sounds like a partner that I could jump in with. Does that make sense so far? Everybody just nod your head if that makes sense so far. Okay. All we're going to do is reach out to these people and have a conversation. Now, you can do that right from the contact us button 90% of the time, right? Contact us, waltkey, walter.keygmail.com. Here's my number. And then you can just send them directly a, a note. If they have a phone number, great. Call them instead. A genuine conversation is always the best way to start this partnership. But if you don't have a phone number on their website, if they have the contact us button, use it. It works. That's exactly how I built my partnership. Um, this is my brand new estate attorney partner in Keystone Heights, Veronica Owens. This is my other estate attorney partner in Gainesville, uh, OC Law Group. Those are about 45 minutes away. So I built partners in different areas that I service. And all I had to do was check that they did estate planning, read their reviews, hit contact us and submit what I submitted. And I'll show you exactly what I submitted. I'll actually send it to you as a template. You can tweak it. Now, here's what I did. When I decided to build an estate attorney partner in Gainesville, I scrubbed through Google. I found three different companies that I thought were the right fit. They were the right size. They had the right service areas. They clearly had an online presence. I didn't feel like they were so big. They wouldn't value relationships. And I sent all three of them the same message right through their contact us button. 
And I basically just said, this is who I am. I'm looking to build strategic partnerships with other business professionals so that we can serve our clients at a higher level. If that sounds like something you might be interested in talking about, here's my information. Now, one of them never got back to me. Not even a thank you, but no thanks. Well, that's clearly not my partner. I'm not going to waste any more time trying to dive into that. No big deal. The other one got back to me and said, hey, you know what? I appreciate your note, but we're not interested. And then the third one said, hey, thanks so much for reaching out to us. Well, Mrs. Osi, who runs the law group, is not interested, but Katie Nepper, our estate attorney, would love to talk to you. The rest is history. So I set up a time to jump on a call with Katie. 30, 35 minute phone call, 20 minutes of that 35 minute phone call was me talking about her right here. Read her bio, find something in common, connect with people on a personal level. So Katie and I ironically had a ton in common. She was academically successful. I graduated summa cum laude. She was a former athlete in college. I'm a marathon runner, right? Uh, she has dogs. I have dogs. She likes to travel. I like to travel. So when we got on the phone, I literally just started the conversation with, hey, before we talk business really quick, I was reading your bio. I just wanted to mention a couple things. And we just talked about what we had in common. We made a connection. And then we dove into the nuts and bolts of what we talked, you know, what I wanted to do, which was create this partnership. Now I will show you exactly, give me two seconds. I'm going to be jumping around on my, uh, on my screen share because I want you guys to see some stuff. Can you see this Word document that starts good afternoon? This is verbatim what I copied and pasted into the contact us forms on three different companies websites it's pretty straightforward stuff i'm looking for a partner in gainesville here's some background on me feel free to change the background to make it fit you i'll send everybody this uh, and i said hey i'm just looking to grow partnerships where you can service my clients and i can service yours and we can grow together and make money as business professionals if they're not interested in that don't take it personally. They clearly don't have the right mindset. They're not operating as the CEO of their company who wants to build the right board of directors. So don't get, don't get wrapped up around people not answering you or saying no. When you find the right partner, you will absolutely know it and you'll do great business together. Now, the other thing I always like to point out, I'm going to unshare my screen for just a minute. This is not a, hey, I think you have my clients. Can I service them? Right. This is not a, can you give me something? Can you give me something? If we're going to create a partnership, then I need to be able to contribute to the growth of this business just as much as I want them to contribute to mine. And the easiest way to do that is to start by contributing to their business first. Because when you say, I'd like to create a partnership where we work and grow together, everyone goes, yeah, sure. That sounds great. But when you actually do the actions that grow their business first, that solidifies how serious you are. And at that point, they'd be kind of silly not to reciprocate. So I'm going to show you exactly how we break this down. Before I dive into how I put these together, think about for a moment all of the other people that are ancillary to real estate that aren't real estate agents that you could be sharing business with, right? The estate attorney is the no-brainer, right? Everyone thinks, well, estate attorneys clear their clients through probate, therefore they have listings. That's true. That's how I get free listings. But what can I do for an estate attorney to grow their business? What else does an estate attorney do? Well, they draft wills, power of attorneys, medical directives, living trust. They can explain to an elderly 75-year-old with grown children what the advantage of a ladybird deed would be, should they pass, and they could move the, the property to their heirs. All of these kind of things, that's what they're doing all day long. And here's the, here's the true, no kidding, statistical fact. 70% of Americans don't have any of those estate planning documents, not even a basic will, much less a power of attorney, medical directive, living trust. So that mm -hmm. means seven out of 10 of your clients, of your friends, of your professional colleagues, they all need an estate attorney's knowledge and service. They're just not thinking about it right now because nobody is around them that cares enough to ask the question. So if you were to ask every single one of your buyer clients, as an example, when you're ready to close that deal, it's about at the closing table and you just say, hey, I'm super excited for you. I know you're going to love this house. Did you update your will? You know what the answer is going to be seven out of 10 times. They're going to look at you funny and go, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a will. 
And that's when you can care enough about your client to explain why you went out and found an amazing estate attorney partner and how you're going to make a text introduction for them so that they can get the education and knowledge they need to protect their new estate because they just bought a multi hundred thousand dollar asset. They're building an estate now, right? Super easy conversation to have. If you just think about, if I ask the question, I already know the answer. I'm just going to ask the question every single time. And every time the opportunity presents itself, I'm going to put people in front of my estate attorney. Now, some of you mentioned that you're new agents. Um, so you might be saying that, Walt, that sounds great, but I don't have a bunch of buyer clients. I don't have, I don't, I'm brand new to this market. I don't know, like I, I know 12 people. Like I don't have a sphere to start asking randomly, did you update your will? Did you update your will? Did you update your will? You can do that. But I get if you're new, you can't do that. I'm going to show you exactly how you can put dozens of people in front of your partner to actively contribute to their business, whether you know somebody or not. And you can do this with an estate attorney. You can do this with your CPA. You can do this with your financial advisor. They all have business to send to you and all of your clients are served better when you introduce them after a transaction, whether they're buying, whether they're selling. If somebody sells a house right now, they're making a lot of money, but the market has moved in their favor, right? Wouldn't it make sense if you've got a seller about to close and you ran their net sheet, you know what, you know they're about to make bank. They're gonna have more money wired into their account than they've ever seen at one time in their life. Don't you care enough about your client to ask them if they have a financial advisor that they trust to guide them through preserving those assets? And nine, nine times out of 10, they're going to say, I'm not really. I don't know what we're going to do with this. Probably going to blow it on a Maserati, right? Introduce them to your estate attorney or your financial advisor partner as a way to serve your client better and contribute to your financial advisor's business. And the financial advisor will reciprocate. So I'm going to assume for a moment that you know nobody. You've never done a transaction. You have no buyers. You have no sellers. How do you then proactively contribute to somebody else's business in order to genuinely get business in return? I'm going to show you exactly how this works. It's so much fun. All right. I'm going to go to, sorry, I, I'm, I'm kind of popular on Facebook. Let me close down all these silly notifications and everything. Okay. So what we're looking at right now is a post that I made for my estate attorney partners talking about how they saved me money on my taxes and how any small business professional should have a conversation with them. This was back in like June when I did this for my CPA partners. This was one post that garnered seven shares and 68 different comments of people who wanted to jump on a Zoom call to talk to these people because I said, hey, this is what they did for me. They're rock stars. Jump on a call with them. That was one post, 68 comments. Now I share these in all of my local community groups. What's going on, Keystone Heights, word of mouth, Gainesville, Florida, Palatka, Putnam County News, right? Any of your local community groups, there's people in there who need this knowledge. So this was for my CPA back in June. This was estate planning 101 for my estate attorney in July. 51 comments, 24 shares, just from my own personal profile. I shared this into dozens of other local community groups because this is value added to my community. Why would I not want my friends and family and neighbors to know how to set themselves up for success? And when they register for the Zoom, I now get to meet somebody that I didn't know. And the value proposition for us connecting was, I want to serve you in a way to give you knowledge. And it puts people in front of my estate attorney. So it's great for the people. It's great for your partner. It's great for you. Every one of you can do an absolutely free Zoom call for your new partner. Just pick a day, pick a time and rock it out. Now I'm going to show you another example here. I'm going to refresh this because it's new. This is a bunch of the spots I put this in today, right? You'll notice the different places that it's in but I'm going to go to my actual profile. It's been an hour, one hour. I posted this this morning from my new financial advisor partner. In one hour, there's 27 comments. Any of you can do this. You don't have to have years of real estate experience, dozens of active clients, 100 closed transactions. 
just think about how you can bring people knowledge that's valuable and then offer to do that by highlighting your partner to educate somebody else and then put it all over the place, put it in your local community. This was, I don't know, 10 minutes to post on my personal profile and then about 15 different local community groups. And on January 18th, I'll have dozens of people on a Zoom call with my new financial advisor partner talking about the five money moves to make in 2024, how to set yourself up for success. Any of you can do this in your market. That's the kind of value that you're bringing to the partner first, because I don't want anything from you until I've proven that I'm willing to contribute to your business. And I tell them that right up front. So our, our conversation that I have with them, we're breaking the ice. We're getting to know each other. We're finding common ground. What do you like? What do I like? We share interests. And I, and I just flat out tell them, this is what I want to do. I want to build a partnership where we can mutually benefit each other's business while serving each other's clients at a higher level. Kind of dumb to say no to that. But after they're like, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds wonderful. I said, well, hold on a minute. I want to make sure that you understand this. This is not a handout. I don't want anything from you until I've shown you that I'm serious about growing your business. So here's what I'd like to do for you. I do this with all of my partners, whether I need to or not, as a show of good faith. I say, I would like you to pick a day and pick a topic you're passionate about. And I am going to host a Zoom call. I'm going to market the Zoom call. I'm going to put dozens of people in front of you that need your knowledge anyway, so that you can educate them in order to empower them to use your services. Let's start with that. What's the worst case scenario? I host a Zoom call for a dozen, two dozen, five dozen people. I give them knowledge that's valuable and my partner never reciprocates. I got to go find another partner. That's okay. I just met five dozen people from the proposition of me adding value to my market. If that's the worst thing that can happen, I'm okay with that. But more often than not, your partner realizes the value of working with you and they reciprocate, which is why I closed a deal in December. I've got a half million dollar listing going up on January 10th. I've got a third one going up right after that. And I just, I'm, I'm just starting with some new partners in 2024, right? It's super fun. Zero dollars spent. It's a little bit of time to go have a great conversation and then act on the knowledge that you want to give somebody. All right, I'm going to stop right there because that's it in a nutshell. I am going to send you guys and gals uh, I'm going to send you a script that you can follow to frame the conversation. I'm going to send you the template to go reach out to them and say, hey, this is what I want to do. If you're interested, get back to me uh, so that you can execute that. But I want to shut up for a minute because uh, I really don't like to talk all that much. I'm going to just open this up for questions. If you want to, because we got a big crowd, we got 35 people. If you want to drop your questions in the chat and I'll answer them as best I can as they come in. But don't be shy. If you've got questions about how to put this together. Drop this in the chat so we can we can learn together. I see everyone's dropping their information in there. That's great too. For real quick before I dive into the Q and A here, if you've never done this before, click on the uh, right below the chat bar, where you know right above where it says who can see your message. Hit the three dots, and you should be able to save the the entire chat, the entire chain. I'm actually looking for it right now. If not, I'll copy and paste it and I'll give it to everybody. It's right after the the little icons at the very, very bottom. And there's the three dots. Yeah, thank you. Very, very, thank you very much. Very, very bottom. Click on the three dots. The very top button is save chat. That will take this entire chat log, save it as a, as a notepad on your computer. You can grab it. You can have everybody's comments, questions, everybody's contact info if you want to do some partnerships. Um, okay. Let me find some questions. Drop me your questions. Are you introducing your partner and then letting them take over the call? Yes, right? Brandy, great question. So two minutes, right? I don't want to get long-winded on this, kind of like Debbie did today, although she was far more gracious than she needed to be. Um, I just want to say something about who they are, what they do, and that they're amazing. And I wanted to get them on this Zoom call so that they could educate our community. Take it away. And then I let them have it. Um, when I'm on the call... What I typically do is I uh, I open a notepad or a Word document and I'm watching the chat. 
So as someone's talking, let's say my estate attorney's talking and they're like, you can do this and that and there's living trust and medical directives and wills and they're just talking, they're doing their thing and, I'm, and people are dropping questions in the chat, right? Hey, what about this thing? How would I structure that thing? I'm copying, pasting those into a Word document so I can keep them nice and clean and orderly. And I'm responding, hey, great question. We're going to get to that at the Q&A. Thanks for asking. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm just kind of managing the chat for them so they don't have to focus on that while they educate. And then at the Q&A slide, I'm like, okay, hey, Katie, real quick, we had some great questions come in while you were talking. I'm going to start at the top. Jane asked about this. And I'm just going to let her answer Jane's question. Tommy asked about this. And that's the first thing we'll do is just do that Q&A. And when you are when you address those questions that way and you say, hey, Jane had a question, answer Jane's questions right now. That's super valuable because they get that personal attention on the call. Um, and then at the end of the call, it's just, it's real simple. Hey, if everybody found this valuable, if you want to reach out to Katie, here's all her contact information. I'm going to drop it in the chat. If you want me to email you her info, drop yours in the chat. And of course, at the end of it, you're going to wrap it all up with a nice email to everybody who registered, whether they showed up or not, doesn't even matter. If they registered, send them an email. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I'm sure that was super valuable. I know I learned some stuff. As a reminder, if you need to reach out to Katie for anything, here's our information again. All right, thanks so much. And you're just proactively putting business in front of your partner. I mean, it's it's free, it's easy, it's an hour of your time, it's super, super easy. It's the value proposition. Everybody wins when you do this. Think about this for a minute. If I went into my local community Facebook groups and I said, I'm going to do something for you for free because it's knowledge that I think everybody needs. Be here on this day and I'll have a professional educate you. That's valuable to my community. That's valuable to me because I'm the face of this event. That's valuable to my partner because I get to proactively put business in front of them everybody wins. There's literally no downside. And the hardest part of the whole thing is just taking an hour to jump on Google, screen through a few companies, find the ones that you feel like is a great fit, and then copy and paste in an introduction to see who wants to reach out to you and have a conversation. What's the worst? They, they never get back to you? Great. Go find another partner. They weren't yours, right? They, they they get back to you and they say, no, thanks. We're not interested. Wonderful. I didn't waste any time with that. They're not my partner. Moving on, right? I'm the CEO. I get to make the decision. If I don't feel like you're the right partner, we're not going to partner. It's my, it's my board of directors and you got to earn a seat, but I'm going to proactively show you why you should be here. And then you just reciprocate. How many people are on your board of directors, Walt? You are. I believe that. Oh, man. It's ever expanding, right? Uh, two different estate attorneys, CPA, probably a second CPA soon in a different market, uh, financial advisor, technically two financial advisors. I just brought this other one on. Um, other coaches, other agents, right? Anytime I can do something to proactively add value back into the world, I find the partner that's better at that than I am. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just become the middleman, right? You've got knowledge that I think is valuable. You can say it better than I can say it. Let me just put that together and put everyone in the same room. And then you, you highlight why you're a rock star. And let me put business in front of you. Uh, let me grab some of the chat here real quick. It's, it's looking good. Uh, after that, do you follow up on the leads as well? Um, so yes, you can. If it's something like an estate attorney, what I typically do is I go to the estate attorney first. And I just say, hey, it's been a week. How'd that go? How many people reached out to you? Right. Just as a reminder that, hey, we just did that. That was great. But also I'm asking, and if only like six people reached out out of a 35 person group or a 40 person group, I might send a follow up email again to everybody to say, hey, just having a conversation with my estate attorney last week and she mentioned something else, wanted to share that with the whole crowd as a way to re-engage with those leads. At the end of the day, though, let me let me let me hit something that's kind of important there, Brandy. I don't have to track how many dollars of business I put in front of the estate attorney. That's not what this is about, right? If nobody reaches out to her, obviously probability is in your favor. People are going to reach out to her, right? But if nobody did, I still showed a very deliberate intention to try to grow their business for them. One person works with her, five work with her, nobody works with her, 500 work with her. 
I made a very deliberate intention to grow their business. And now they would be silly not to reciprocate because they know the value of what I'm willing to do for them. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I keep my personal Facebook separate from my business, but I don't have a lot of friends. How can I get more? Go into your local Facebook groups. Uh, I was told to join local community groups, uh, adding people in areas I serve. Yes, uh, I do that. I'm just reading the, some comments really quick. It's a great way to network and meet new people. Top five businesses for partnership. What are the community groups? Okay, so let's talk about the community groups. Um, these are not the buy-sell trade groups. Not the where you go in and it's like, what do you want to list for sale? Your local community focused groups. What's going on in city, town, county? Word of mouth, city, town, county. Uh, city, town, county, community news. The groups where people are saying stuff like, hey, who knows a great air conditioner guy? My AC just went out. Hey, what are all those cop cars doing flying down the road? Anybody know what that's all about? those local social interactive community groups, because that's where th those groups are designed for this kind of things. I want to bring a professional to educate my community about how to set themselves up financially in 2024. That's a no brainer. And it's free, right? It's not spam. It's not self promotion. I'm not selling you anything. I brought a partner in to educate our community because this is what these groups are for. And so uh, if I post that in 20 different groups, 18 of them are going to approve the post. Two are just weird and they're like, I don't like that guy. The other 18 are going to approve the post, right? So be in all those groups. Um, yes, you can do this on Nextdoor as well. For those that have a big Nextdoor presence, I have a pretty small community and Nextdoor is just not super popular where I'm at. I'm on it. I'm in it. Uh, but it doesn't move as, as much as some markets. Nextdoor has really got a nice foothold. Um, you can absolutely do it on Nextdoor as well. Uh, what are the top five businesses for partnership? Um, I'll give you the top three, no doubt. A state attorney, CPA, financial advisor. No doubt. Those three, go build those partners. Why? Well, we talked about a state attorney already, right? They literally, their whole job is to walk people through the probate process so that they're ready to list a house. And then someone's got to list a house. If you're their partner, they should be introducing you directly to the person that's ready to list their house. So that's a no-brainer. And there's value you add back with wills, power of attorneys. We talked about that. CPAs, right? That's another big one. A lot of people miss this, right? CPAs don't work with people that are broke, right? If you're broke, you don't need a CPA, which means I've got money. and means I want to keep my money. I don't want the taxes. I, I want to figure out how do I keep what I earn? And the CPA is talking to these professionals usually or wealthy people saying, hey, you know what? Here's some things we could do to pull your taxes down and not have so much taxable income. You should buy some depreciating assets. Well, what's a depreciating asset, Bob? Go buy an investment property. Whoa, that sounds like a great idea. I don't know anyone. I know someone, my partner. Go talk to Terry. She's got you. Go talk to Leslie. She's got you, right? They're having those conversations. They just don't have a partner to send them to. So they have the conversation and then it dies at the conversation, right? But you can, you can, how many people could you put in front of a CPA? A lot, right? Not even your clients. A lot of your clients could use a great CPA. How many colleagues do you know? How many other small business self-employed professionals do you know? We're surrounded by them. Right? They all need a great CPA. So think bigger, right? You you can put business in front of a CPA all day long. I see a lot of people talking about right? divorce attorneys. Yeah, divorce attorneys are fantastic too. I'm going to come back to that one. That's that's definitely fourth on the list. Uh, bankruptcy attorneys would be number five um, for, for lots of reasons. So let's talk about um, financial advisors for a minute. Again, financial advisors don't work with people that don't have money. It's kind of the same conversation, right? I've got all this money in a mutual fund and I'm kind of bored with it and I want to do something a little more saucy. How else can I make a better return? Some of those conversations are going to turn, oh, I heard that Airbnb is really popular right now. How do I do that, financial advisor? And your financial advisor, if they're your partner, will say, you know what? I've heard that's a fantastic investment, but I'm not the professional there. Kathy's the professional there. Let me introduce you to Kathy. But go back to how do you add value to the financial advisor? If you are selling a house, 
anybody who bought a house longer than say two or three years ago, statistically it's six to nine years before they sell, right? They're making money, a lot of it. And you should care enough about your sellers to ask them, do you have a trusted financial advisor that can walk you through how to preserve these out? You got one shot at this. You're making $160,000 overnight. And when it's gone, it's gone. Can I introduce you to my financial advisor just so that they can give you some education about what your options are, right? We can trade business all day long with a financial advisor. Bankruptcy attorney, a lot of people, or, or do, let's talk divorce attorney. A lot of people are like, well, I don't know a bunch of people getting divorced. I get that. And it's probably not a good idea to call up all your friends and be like, so, uh, hey, Sally, um, how's the marriage? Need a divorce attorney? I probably wouldn't do that either. But divorce attorneys are still attorneys and there's other things they do. Here's something that you can take to the bank with you. Divorce attorneys draft a document called a cohabitation agreement. A cohabitation agreement is a legal document when mm -hmm. two unmarried people want to purchase a home together. Mm -hmm. They don't fall under marriage law because they're not married. So the cohabitation agreement outlines how they protect each other should this not come together in a marriage and later they have to sell a house. So anyone that's not married that wants to buy a house you could care enough about that client to say, hey, listen, I love you guys. And I'm sure this is going to work out, but you're not married yet. And so there's some things that you don't get the benefit from, from marriage law. Could I introduce you to my attorney partner who could draft a cohabitation agreement for you? Now, that's a lot easier conversation than, hey, uh, how's the marriage, <laughs> right? And when someone gets divorced, a few things happen. One of a few things, either they sell the house and split the proceeds. There's a listing. They sell the house and they got to go buy new houses. There's a listing and mold and buys, or they refinance the house in order to buy somebody out. And that somebody still has to go buy a house. There's a lot of real estate business at the end of that mm -hmm. divorce, right? That's a great partnership to build. You can share business that way. Hi, right. uh, I partner with a family law attorney in my city. We do monthly webinars. Beautiful. Uh, Kamisha, what's your webinar? What do they talk about? Take two minutes, educate us. What do they talk about? Sure. Mm -hmm. So the attorney is the host of the webinar and it's a divorce advice webinar. Mm -hmm. So this is strictly about divorce mm -hmm. and the attorney mm -hmm. talks about the legal part. I talk yeah. about real estate and then they have a, uh, usually like a counselor to talk about the emotional mm -hmm. aspects. So it's a really comprehensive um, and they, we partner through Facebook and they invited me to be a part of that. And it's been several months. I get leads and we, we do things back and forth. So it's a really great partnership that you guys should look into. How many people usually show up? Um, on the webinars, you know, 10 or more, but um, the, the lead list is 30, you know, people will sign up and they won't show up. Yeah. But like mm -hmm. Walt said, Hey, thank you for your interest in our webinar. This is, you know, if you want to talk to these people, talk to these people. And I've had people come to me and say, hey, thanks. We're not quite ready right now to buy again, but, you know, we, we, we're keeping in touch. Okay. So it's a nurture, nurture as well. It's not, you know, nothing's right away, but um, it's, it's a good partnership for sure. Fantastic. You have to do something to kind of keep things, um, to keep the people who are attending to have an option to be anonymous as it's kind of a tough subject. Well, First it's on time. Zoom, so they would, they could, anonym, you know, they could, they don't have to be on video, they could take their name out so they can be anonymous, but honestly, it hasn't, I thought it might be an issue too, but it's, it's reality and it's life, and I think people are like, I'm here for edu education and information, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going through a divorce, it just means they're there for information, it's free, they can come as many times as they want, it's just a workshop. Love awesome. It. That's great. That's a perfect ask example of how non-anonymously, to... which shocked me, because I was like you, thinking people might not really participate, but people ask questions and are really, they really just want the information. Love it. Perfect example of how to leverage a family law, i.e. divorce and custody attorney without having to be that sleazy one that's like, hey, uh, Joe seems kind of like a jerk. You ready for a divorce attorney? Much better, much better approach on that. Um, so listen, we'll wrap this up. It's almost 45. I just wanted to give you this knowledge. Again, I'm going to send you everyone that was on the call, everyone that didn't make it, going to email you after the recording is done. I'll send you the recording so you can watch it again. going to send you a template to put into the contact us so you can go have that conversation, tweak it, make it your own, but I'll give you a framework. And then I'll send you a script where you can, again, it's just the framework. A script is not meant to be a dissertation. It's meant to be an, an outline. Make mm -hmm. it your own. 
what I always recommend is right before you have the conversation, go read their bio if they have one online. And and just that's a point I want to bring up because there's a personal connection there. We have something in common there, right? Don't just go in and be like, business. Just like you wouldn't do that with a client, right? You wouldn't walk into a listing and be like, here's the price, sign here, right? It, get to know them and find some commonality and then move into the obvious stuff, which is let's partner together, right? So easy at that point. Okay, questions, comments, last minute thoughts. Uh, Natalie says, should we go have coffee with them? If you can meet them in person, absolutely go meet them in person. Mm -hmm. In the hierarchy of great conversation, face-to-face -face is always the best. A, a Zoom call is second because it's still face-to-face. -face. If you absolutely have to get on a phone call, there's still value there, but there's mm -hmm. nothing like being able to read somebody's facial expressions. As an example, right? I, I said, it, it, I'm the I'm the CEO. I make the decisions in my business. If you don't feel like the right partner to me, we're not going to be partners. And at any point, if I'm face to face with somebody, even on Zoom, and I'm explaining to them how I want to grow their business and I want to do these things and I want to work together and I want to serve our clients better. And they're like, hmm, yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And th if they're Eeyore, when, yes. when, when a business professional starts talking about making money with them by serving clients better and they're Eeyore, you're not on my board of directors. Nothing personal. You go do you. This, this is not the right fit for my company, right? Mm -hmm. My company understands and appreciates the value of building relationships. That's what we're looking for, right? So that that that's easier to do face-to-face. -face. Right. Okay. Last minute questions, comments, thoughts? <sighs> All right. Hopefully this was valuable to everybody in a very short frame. The only thing that I will, uh, last thing I'll leave you with is uh, you've been lied to your whole life. If you've ever done a coaching call with me that you know what I'm about to say, knowledge is not power. Everything I've mentioned to you today is phenomenal. It will make you money. It will grow your business. If you don't go execute on the knowledge, it's useless. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you some stuff after the call to help you execute. You got to budget some time on your calendar to go look those folks up, decide how many you're going to message and plan on booking some conversations so that you can build those partnerships, right? You're going to have to take that mm -hmm. action yourself. But hopefully with this knowledge and a little bit of resources, you'll go execute and you'll go grow your business. Happy New Year. Hope this gets a great Thank start to 2024. Me. Let me know if you guys need anything at all. You guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're the man. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.